Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 7, Video 3 on Resistance and Powering Prediction using Hull Speed. We've seen how to set up our design for use in Hull Speed and how to take the measurements off it. Now let's do our final input of data before looking at our resistance results. There are a couple of extra things that we may want to consider when it comes to resistance. We may want to consider aerodynamic resistance and to do that we can enter in a frontal or windage area. That's just the cross-sectional area of the vessel above the waterline as seen from the front. And if we want to take into account any headwind speed we can add in that headwind speed. Hull speed will adjust for the relative speed of the vessel automatically. We should enter in a drag coefficient to take into account the shape of the vessel above the waterline. If we have a sort of box shaped superstructure that would be a drag coefficient of about 1, a nice streamlined superstructure perhaps 0.8 and a superstructure with a lot of drag perhaps 1.1 or 1.2. If we want to take into account resistance due to an appendage we can enter in the dimensions of that appendage. We enter in the surface area of the appendage and also its nominal length. That nominal length is just used for the calculation of the Reynolds number. Uh, there are also uh, some coefficients that you can enter. This is the same coefficient as defined by Holtrop or the 1 plus K2 coefficient as he refers to it. And there are different coefficients for different kinds of appendages. So we can see coefficients for rudders and skegs and bilge keels and so on. Another possible uh, additional data entry item is the correlation allowance. That's a factor that's used to account for differences between model tests and full scale tests. It defaults to 0 0.0004. Some of the methods will calculate the correlation allowance automatically, but you can override that for the other methods if you wish. And finally, although it will be rare, you can modify the water properties if you need to. Of course we need to know how fast the vessel is going to predict its resistance so we enter in a range of speeds from a minimum to a maximum speed and to calculate the power that's the resistance times the velocity divided by efficiency we need to enter in that overall efficiency factor and 55% is a common value that's used for that. Then to review the results of our resistance calculations for the, res re the regression methods we can review the resistance and powering results in the data table or the results table and we can also review the series of curves. Those curves are not just the curves of resistance and power but the individual components of resistance are presented in a non-dimensional coefficient form. So it's a good idea to review those coefficients and see how they're varying. They'll only, obviously only be showing if those resistance components actually apply for that method. If you're looking at one of the planning methods, there's also a graph that you can show there of the running trim to see how the trim of the vessel varies through the different stages of the planning regime. So you should obviously review all of these results and make sure the values are within an acceptable range. Let's move over to hull speed and walk through that process. So in the bottom left hand corner of our data window we have the properties relating to aerodynamic resistance. So we need to enter in our frontal area. Our headwind speed, our drag coefficient and uh, the air density is set for you. Notice that as I'm making these small changes here the curves on the right are updating automatically. Uh, so with the regression methods the analysis is fast enough that it's continually recalculated as we enter data into this table. For the appendages we put in the surface area of the appendage and the nominal length of the appendage, that's really the length of flow over the appendage as I mentioned used for calculation of the Reynolds number and the appendage factor which we would take from uh, Holtrop's table, correlation allowance and other water density items at the bottom. So the results of our analysis we can see in our graph window in graphical form. You can see I've selected two methods here, the Series 60 and the Holtrop method for a ship. And we're looking at the curve of resistance in kilonewtons versus speed, both in knots and fruit number. And from the drop down menu we can see the range of graphs that are available. So our power is defined uh, from our speeds. The range of speeds that we're looking at defines the length of this graph and also the efficiency, so I'll put in my 55% efficiency there and uh, then we can display our power curve to see the power requirements at different speeds. There are also the different components of resistance here, so the bare hull resistance without appendages, 
remember back to the first table we saw that we had resistance as a combination of residuary resistance and frictional resistance we have that and also wave resistance and viscous resistance so we can see how the residuary resistance due to form increases with speed while the frictional resistance due to surface friction actually reduces as speed increases so the uh, total resistance is obviously a combination of those two we also have uh, tabulation of the correlation coefficient and as I mentioned that running trim for the planing methods. If we want to check that data numerically we can bring forward the results table and tabulate uh, the same information in uh, numerical form, copy and paste to Excel and so on. So that uh, completes our final setup and analysis of the resistance using the regression methods. Thank you for watching.